what's up guys it is early in the morning and I mean early it's about 5 30 and we've got a lot to do today so the goal is to get it all knocked out at the start of the day which will allow for everything to go wrong in the middle of the day so what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna go pick up the skid it was out on rent for the weekend so once I get that I can then swap trailers and we can start doing some dumpster drop-offs that's exactly why I'm up early so I don't have to go straight to the dumpster drop-offs which requires a different trailer and if I did that I then need to swap and then come back to get this trailer so I just decided to wake up early and kind of do a nice flow which I'm all about if you've ever seen the channel before so while I'm doing drop-offs Keegan my main OG driver here is going to be doing some empties and then he will actually be basically taking those empties straight to drop-offs as well but so we have a few drop-offs today and the cool thing is I think it least two or three of them are commercial accounts and they came in on like Friday and we're going to talk about how we got them uh, I think a lot of guys are always about how do I grow how do I grow what do I do what do I do and we're going to tell them how I don't know how well you can see it but this fog is out here every morning it's one of the spookiest things and every evening for that matter when I'm coming home or going to the shop all right, everything looks good. This guy's rented for me twice. I don't see anything, at least on the outside, that would indicate he was really rough on it. Just dirty. Obviously, he did a lot of dirt work. Looks like he said something about he's going to be getting ready to put more gravel here. And he moved a bunch of dirt. Yeah, and he, like, that's old. I mean, if I was getting upset about this, I need to get out of the business for sure. But yeah, it's just dusty. But I will say, this one made me nervous, and it always does because of the type of work he was doing take a look at this there was like tons and tons of dirt right on the edge there and he's working right next to a pond the whole weekend i was just waiting for that call uh, uh kind of fell in the pond what should i do but nah he did fine he obviously used the cab door too so many people will rent this thing and they just leave the cab door open and it looks like a sandstorm went through it but he obviously took advantage of it it was so hot he probably had that ac cranked up but yeah this is gonna be nice we're just gonna pretty much rinse the outside <clears throat> dust the inside real quick with a swiffer this one will be ready to go out after some grease oh i accidentally ran over this one at the last job whoops and of course we say it ain't going nowhere branding that's it man that's what's gonna get you this business all the time and I I can't emphasize enough and we talked in one of the last videos I did about how to utilize social media without just posting your prices for whatever your business is or for you know blah, 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 blah. you know like there's there's a certain strategy on social media you should really go check out that video especially if you're very opposed to social media it might shed a different light on it because it's not going away you know, it might change. Facebook might disappear. Twitter might take off more. Twitter might fall off. TikTok is, uh, you know, I don't even like TikTok. But my point is you need to adapt and you got to get over some of your, you know, thoughts about those types of things. Because if you want to succeed, Coca-Cola is using it. Target's using it. Uh, all these big companies, every big company you can ever think of has social media. You can't tell me there's one out there unless it's some big government contract that doesn't need the public to know about them they're using social media but like i said we've already talked about that one of the big things that really separates me from guys that are just kind of running on the side right having a location with a brand everything i have is branded except for the truck i keep talking about it we really just need to get a sick wrap on it but machines are branded dumpsters are branded building is branded i own this building you can also go watch how i bought this building technically without spending a single dollar i use some equity you can use equity too i already had an investment property that i made i mean it was a it was the best decision i've ever made because it came with a lot of equity i got a sweet deal on it and then i leveraged that property to buy this property in reality you could do that with your house and the cool thing is even after i signed the papers without putting a dollar down on this property, I turned around and I rented half of it to somebody else as well, which paid well over my mortgage on the property. So it's a dual purpose building. 
And then we have the lot out here, which will be for all rental stuff. Like it'll be my own stuff to store out here and then people can store their stuff. So this building is making me money, but also allowing my brand to look much bigger and operate much more efficiently. All right, let's go put this back on our little advertising bill over here. I still really want to ramp this with a car. It's gonna have to happen. Put in the comments if you want to see it. Maybe we'll try to ramp it into a dumpster. Who knows? We've done some pretty crazy stuff. I know it can be scary too to like, I, you know, make a decision like that. The hardest thing it was for me when I started this business was to decide how big I wanted it to be because at the end of the day, it was really up to my own limitations and my own ideas. And I'm not telling anybody that watches this video to start a dumpster business. I wanna be so clear about that. A lot of guys, I feel like watch this and I'm glorifying it in some ways, but I do have a lot of videos that are like, this sucks, this is hard, this isn't as easy as some of the other gurus on YouTube and Facebook make it out to be. This is still a grind. And you have to remember, like, why did you start your side hustle? Because a lot of guys I'm finding are watching these videos. Don't do dumpsters. They might do, you know, power washing, mowing, uh, construction, all kinds of stuff on the side. And that's the whole idea. But eventually you have to make that decision. Why did I get into this? Was it to make a couple extra bucks? Was it to see where it goes? You know, you know, if it keeps going up, you know, I'm going to leave my day job. Eventually you're gonna to get to this point where there's a gap in the bridge and you either have to jump, turn back around, or just stay stagnant where you are. Like this is as far as I want this to go. Uh, this is becoming too much, I'm gonna leave. Or, you know, you have it that F it moment and you jump over and there's no turning back. We're up the trailer. Woo! Let's go baby. All right, starting with the Holiday Inn. It's actually probably one of the biggest hotels here in my town. Um, it's got quite a few rooms and they're actually redoing like all of them, floor by floor by floor. So this is already their third dumpster. They're basically going one week at a time, one floor at a time, one section at a time as they tear out carpet and put in new furniture. This, they said this is gonna be a long, long job. So it is pretty cool to see that they just keep asking. I always try to bring them a green dumpster because it's obviously their brand. So just, you know, a little thing. But the owner actually said that the reason they're using us is because Google. They said, we looked you up and you just have superb reviews compared to other places. Let's let this helicopter go by. So they saw Google and then one of the people that work here was like, dude, I see his cans all over the place. I think he has like some really big ones. Well, really big is 20 yard. To be honest, they probably could knock this job out with another company that uses 40 yards, but the problem is they have a reputation for not getting them picked up and getting another one out as quickly. But we can turn them over so quick because of our business model that it gets us a lot of praise. So he's like, between that, the recommendations we got, that's why we used you. And this is a large company, but it's, it's operated very locally. Everybody here, like the people here can make the decisions. The place we're dropping off next, it's more commercial in the sense that like somebody off site is making the decision and the people inside really get no input in whose, you know, service is being used. So funny enough, I just spotted something in the parking lot at this hotel. This truck and trailer would mean nothing to most of you, but you see that big gray box right there? That gray box actually has a jet engine motor in it, and I'm confident in that. That's the company's that's renting the other side of my shop. It's called, well, it used to be called Air USA. It's a different company now. And they're like a private fighter pilot company that trains stuff for the military. So I have a feeling they're here to empty out more stuff. They all have told me they're moving their entire operation down to Texas just because that's where the owner is. So I'm gonna guess that came out of the other side of the shop. So we're just getting closer and closer to having access to that entire side of the shop where we're gonna make the decision of either rinsing it out again or blowing up the business more and using that space. So it's kind of a hard decision sometimes. 
All right, we're heading out to the next drop. Well, actually, we gotta go pick up a dumpster and then the next drop. But to my point here, guys, one thing that I cannot stand where I see in at least my industry of dumpsters is people saying, oh, you guys running trailers. I mean, you get into a hook lift truck, get into a big truck. These, these trailers can't, can't do the same work. Here's the deal. I know guys who are getting out of the business because they're getting killed by guys with trailers right now. Um, same with the mowing industry. Like your equipment is important, right? It needs to work for you. But don't get stuck in the trap that you need the best of everything according to somebody else. Everybody has certain needs for their business. You know, maybe you can't park or have access to or store a big semi. Maybe you don't have a CDL. Maybe, you know, you can't put a trailer in your driveway because you live in an HOA. There's all kinds of different rules and regulations and things that stop certain people from building their business a certain way. But at the same time, Holiday Inn didn't see my truck and trailer before I brought that dumpster. They don't care. They don't care what my equipment is. They wanna know how big the container is, how much it costs, and how good are you at doing your job. That's it. So to all the guys that are shaming or being shamed because you don't have the right equipment in your business, it doesn't matter. The next place we go, I promise you doesn't know that it's being brought on this trailer and with this truck, which is my backup truck. So if you wanna talk about maybe the least professional looking setup, this is the one because it's my backup setup. But they don't care. They wanna know if it's gonna be there on time, which is in the next 45 minutes and they wanna know if it's gonna get picked up and if you know their payment's gonna come through and everything's gonna be okay. That's it. That's all they care about. They want the service done and they want it done right. They don't care what equipment you have. I can't emphasize that enough. Stop focusing on trying to get the better, best, different equipment for your business and focus on providing the best value to a customer. And I'll tell you why I bring that up because look at this, it's a dumpster. Who cares? Nobody cares if you brought it in on a big truck or a small truck or a whatever. I don't, I don't think people care if you brought it in on a helicopter. Okay, that'd be kind of cool. But what I'm saying is I see so many guys, at least, again, my industry, my example, apply this to, you know, whatever you're in. They will go from this trailer and truck setup. And there'll be some reason, you know, they'll have bought it a year or two ago when it was cheaper and then what they'll do is they'll be like, okay, I don't like the trailer. I saw this guy driving a truck. Uh, he, his business is doing way better than mine. So I'm going to get into a truck and that truck is going to, you know, load the cans on the back of it. So I don't have a trailer to worry about. I'm like, okay, cool. So you're going to sell your entire setup and then go buy this truck and then buy the cans that fit that truck, right? How much did that improve your business in revenue, I don't care how much faster it might have been or how much easier it might have been to load. You could have practiced more and got better at it and more efficient with the trailer if you wanted to. But how much more revenue did it bring you in? If it somehow miraculously did bring in more revenue, not because of, oh, I was able to get one more drop today because I could get to the landfill faster because I didn't have to make 10 attempts to back in because I'm really bad at driving a trailer. Don't use that as an, as an excuse. I don't want to hear that one. But what I want to know is, did the look of your setup change the revenue that much more? And in some ways, maybe it did. I don't know. But I'm tired of seeing guys sell their entire setups, lose money on them, then go out and buy, in the economy we have now, a bigger setup, or not even a bigger, another setup, like an under CDL truck. That's the example I'm going to use. I'll see guys sell this, then they'll buy an under CDL setup. And what that is means that the can goes on the back of the truck, but it's not a semi. It's at right at 26,000 pounds, but their website still sucks. Their Facebook presence is awful. Their Instagram is awful. You know, they don't do any other marketing. Their Google, my business doesn't exist. What happened? Why didn't you get more business? It's because you focused on the wrong thing. Getting the new truck, the fancier truck, the easier truck didn't get you more business. It just felt better. You wasted money. Yeah, maybe over the long term, it's a good investment. And, I, and I'm not disagreeing with that, but that doesn't need to be your focus because you can worry about the equipment later. But why not make sure the business is bumping? I mean, really bumping before you make changes like that. To the guys that, you know, they've got the good website. They've got the good social presence. They're maxing out all their dumpsters every day. Yeah. Then we can talk about efficiency in certain setups. 
and again, apply this to your industry or whatever your hustle is, that is when you can kind of look at everything and be like, okay, maybe we can tweak this, we can get this set up and we can kind of integrate it in. And then we can, as we replace that stuff that we had before and sell that as we buy new stuff, you know, we'll have this model that's way more efficient. But if it's not changing the numbers on paper, you're just feeling good about it. And keep in mind, I'm not talking about selling this setup to buy a bigger setup. So if you were to sell this because people aren't renting 14 yards, but everybody keeps asking me for 30 yards, so that's why you made the switch, totally understand it. Again, apply this to your industry and what I'm talking about, think about it. But if you are selling all this stuff and the cans aren't getting any bigger, the cans aren't getting any smaller, it's essentially the same thing, it's just on a different setup. Eh, you know what I mean? Like nothing changed. The look changed, but other than that, that didn't bring in more business, I promise you. All right, last commercial drop. We've got a couple residential drops today. You'll recognize this place. It's about time it started pay paying me back. I mean, really. So, kind of cool. It looks like they're gonna do some construction. It's on the far side, which is really cool because the main highway is on the other side of this and they can see it, so it's good advertising too. Everybody comes down this road to get into the parking lot as well, so I'm not complaining. So of course the company that ordered this dumpster is third party and they've never been to Quincy, not once. So their company is going to travel here to do the construction. And so the only way they can find us is to search for us, Google. We don't show up first, but we are within the top three. We have the best reviews and we have probably the best website. That's the thing guys. If you can just adapt to the customer, that's what you need to do. Nobody would know I have a dumpster business in California unless I was on Google. That's all there is to it. And the other thing is the person that I'm working with is texting my phone to my company. So if you have a company phone that doesn't allow texting, find a way to get it because they need to just send me a, like a photo. And the easiest way for them to do that was to just send it straight to my phone rather than going out and emailing because you know, they received it through their phone. So the only way they knew how to do it was to forward it because just because you're good at technology doesn't mean they are. So they just want the easiest possible way to communicate with you. So I text a lot of my customers. It makes my life easier and it has so much stuff in writing that if I ever need to go back to them, I'll be like, hey, look, this, this is exactly how it was. This is what I did. This is what you did. It is pretty nice. So again, being able to do that, because I'll tell you Republic, Area, Waste Management, all those GFL, big companies, they're not texting their customers and making their lives easier. If anything, they're making it harder. They're only dealing with them over the phone. They're not showing up. They're picking things up weeks late, days late, or days early because they're confused. Texting, emailing, having a good website, super important, and being found. Being found online so these people outside of your state or city can find you, call you, and they don't care about price. They originally wanted a 40 yard dumpster. I said, I don't have 40s, but I can bring you 220s. She's like, let me talk to somebody, talk to somebody. Well, actually, he's not even sure we need a 40. We might be able to use a 20, and if not, we'll just order another one. I was like, all right, easy enough. So we'll get this set, and the cool thing is, we'll probably get tagged by a few people in town who see it. So that would be kind of nice, because a lot of contractors I know use Home Depot. Again, not to talk about social media too much because we've already done that. First thing I did at each of these drops, because they are big known places in town, you could say basically landmarks when you're trying to tell somebody where something is, I took pictures of them and said, you know, Holiday Inn and Home Depot made the right choice this Monday. That's it. It's telling a story. I'm not telling anybody my prices. I'm not telling anything. You know, I'm not trying to sell any specials. It's just those are big companies using my dumpsters. So it gives some value to your brand for other people to see that. So that's it guys. I'm not trying to like lecture anybody here, but I want you guys to really think about these things, especially when you're thinking about the growth. This isn't me telling you, oh, you shouldn't upgrade your equipment. It's something you should definitely eventually do when the time warrants it. But I really want you to shift your priorities on, you know, the right moves at the right time. So just Keep that in mind and keep grinding. That's all there is to it. Hope to catch you guys in the next video. And again, apply this to whatever industry you're in. We're not just talking to dumpster guys here. There's plenty of you guys who are in different industry that are watching these videos. 
Hope to catch you guys next time. Make sure to follow, like, and subscribe. Everything you see helps just grow the channel. Catch ya.